All right. Uh, okay. Hey. Uh, what was that? <laughs> that was, okay, guys. What a way to start. Uh, like from Sheer Terror, we're live. We have to do this now. Oh, we're here. We're stuck. Hello, everybody. <laughs> now on, oh, that's going to be the intro from now on. That's really the intro problem. for every JavaScript breakpoint. It's just like a soundboard of like men going like, <laughs> <"Rawr."> <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Um, it might come as no surprise to you that I'm on a lot of meds at the moment. Um, I'm, I have the flu. Um, Xandor is also like man man down with the flu uh, some other people in this meeting as well are like pain meds and stuff so geez what a what no better time to talk about javascript so so let's get into it <laughs> just take pain meds preemptively before we start talking about javascript all right let's get into it what happened this week so mike has something really cool he wants to talk about and that is svelte ruins mike what is svelte ruins Give us the quick rundown. So, so it's um, something that Svelte has brought out that has um, really empowered the community to to complain about things. Um, there there have been a lot of takes around ruins. Um, I think they're really really interesting, but um, a lot of people say they feel like like me like Reacty, but essentially they're introducing three three functions that allow their reactivity primitives um and i think it's really important that that they're recognized as primitives but essentially you can have a um i think the state primitive and then a props primitive and a effect primitive but what these allow for you to do is um create signals um akin to solid js where um rich harris has said he's taken his inspiration from and essentially what that is, instead derived. of using, sorry? Don't forget about derived. Derived is a Oh, yeah, well. yeah, derived, a fourth one, my bad, is derived as well. Um, and these essentially allow you to opt into a different reactivity pattern. So I think um, Svelte normally uses a mark and sweep under the hood. And this puts you into an observer, like like you see signals in, in SolidJS. So, yeah. um, correct my my ignorance, but is is derived kind of like computed computed yes, values correct. or yes exactly okay. that yeah yeah um, so you can derive a value from a from a, a piece of state. Mm, mm. Yeah. It's interesting. So, my, my students, sorry, a lot of students always ask me like, what what's the equivalent in React? And basically, everything in React is computed. Yeah. Yeah, just like it, it's there are trade-offs for all of these reactivity systems, um, which is is really interesting. But I, I think the real, um, like I said, like think of it as a primitive is is really useful because um, when you're abstracting work out or creating stores, um, these mm. these primitives can end up really really powerful. Um, I think the big backlash or knee-jerk reaction was around the the boilerplate that's needed for it. Um, because it it is it is a little bit more verbose, but it also allows you to opt in for for something that offers a lot of benefits. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think a lot of people have been comparing it to the the regular um, state handling of Svelte, which is basically just writing plain old JS. So let mm -hmm. value is equal to something, um, mm -hmm. whereas as this uh, requires you to create a getter if I remember right as well. Mm. Um, and be a little bit more verbose about things. So previously, Svelte also had a its, its derived value, which was, would just be attaching a label of dollar sign, so dollar sign colon. Mm. Um, and yeah, the, uh, this opens up a lot of a lot of doors. Uh, uh, um, Rich Harris released a video, like I think two or three days ago, where he showed a couple of implementations of how the primitives could be used. But essentially, he created um, views ref, which was really interesting. He created um solids create signal um mm -hmm. just using the the new state primitive which is really really cool right. and also kind of emphasizes that this isn't necessarily something that most devs would be touching frequently um but it sets svelte up to to allow for for a different reactivity pattern and potential like ergonomic benefits there 
So, mm. I mean, from my perspective, re like creating a signal within salt seems pretty fun because that's a pattern that's yeah. that's really common to me. Um, mm. The challenge comes in is when you're not working with primitives. So salt or uh, ruins don't handle primitives well at the moment. Um, it is quite clunky. Um, some people have come up with solutions to have, um, you know, deeply nested data structures that that are reactive. Um, mm. But this is still very early days. The cool thing about mm. it is Svelte is getting closer and closer to vanilla JS performance. Um, mm. Svelte 5 is really, like, a, a, from, from what I've seen, it's going to blow everything out of the water, which is, mm. is really interesting. Mm. Um, yeah, I've, I've, got, I've got a lot of thoughts around that, but um, we'll probably touch mm. on them soon because I think the, the best pairing for Svelte at the moment is not Svelte Kit, it's Astro. Um, but yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's probably some, okay. some opinions there. Okay. Sorry. That. that... Hot take. Okay, ben. <laughs> ah, yo! If you think that's a hot take, just stick around for a couple of minutes, guys. You, you have no <laughs> idea what's coming up. Um, okay, that's interesting. I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I don't enjoy writing Svelte. Um, which, which seems like such an insane thing to say in 2023. Um, th there's for me too much black magic happening under the hood um but i i really like what it gives you so i almost want to say you know like not to preempt things a bit too much i i also don't like writing typescript that much but i you all man like i love what it gives you like the like what you get for doing that thing um yes yeah, so it's interesting times for svelte because i almost want to say with, with some of the newer stuff that Svelte has been doing, it's it's almost like, I think they've built a better, I need to be very careful now, but I think they've done the, what what Vue was seeking out to do with the composition API, just better than Vue. They've almost built a Vue composition API, it's better than Vue's own one. Um, yeah, so, oh, so like I was mm -hmm. thinking this exact thing, when you were saying you don't like writing Svelte, like, I, I, mm. I get it. I, like, I was on the Svelte train for a long time, and then when Solid became popularized when mm. solid start came out i kind of jumped ship um mm. but whenever i write svelte it's just like yeah this is what i wished Vue was mm. like 100 percent. Uh, i've mm. worked with you quite a bit in the past and like there are some things that are, are a bit of a thorn in my side and a lot of things that, mm. that don't feel very idiomatic or like idiomatic to javascript for me um but svelte mm. feels like yes there's a lot of yes. black magic um, it's just yes. like things magically work when if you if you're used to working with um, you know UI frameworks, it's it's it can be almost spooky. Um, mm. But even with what they've got in place, if you like, it, it is easy to be productive. I think that's the big mm. thing. Is like whenever whenever I wrote Vue, I did feel very productive for for the time that I put in. I and mean, I think mm. Svelte just takes that one step further. But also, um, if you have control issues, it's definitely not the not the tool for you because mm. um, it is doing a lot of stuff. And when you do run into edge cases, mm. um, it is a black box. Yeah. yeah. Like you, you're literally, you're literally, you can't rely. Yeah. Like, and, and like, I find this actually with a lot of things. And then I found, uh, I find Svelte to be even more of a black box than Vue. But that being said, like, if I'm, going for something like this i'd rather just go all in and be like cool you know like this is like you know i'm in svelte land now uh, i just follow the svelte logic and um yeah it's it's very interesting times um i i do think Vue has kind of painted itself a bit in a corner with its kind of whole progressive framework approach which i'm actually not even convinced is something that people really want but so the idea is Vue's main selling point is, oh, you can just import it as a CDN and then you can, you know, like do like the, like uh, kind of the CLI with, um, with Veep. And then, you know, once your project grows, you can um, just like use the full on view CLI and bring in, so you can start out with the option API. I actually think that sounds very nice in theory. It's a nice marketing thing, but like I don't think that solves a problem anyone is really having. But I think it's really holding them back because they can't be too radical in terms of new things that they kind of release because it needs to fit in 
in this model that you progressively go into the complexity. Whereas, you know, for example, like Svelte, it's just like, this is Svelte, you need to learn it before you even start, period. Like, there's no easing you into the concepts, but... Yeah, but they also make that really easy. Like, the getting started for Svelte is, is yeah. the, the best around. Their tutorial is amazing. Yes, um, yes. But your yeah. hot take here is, I think Nuxt is better than Next. Interesting. Why? I have, I have, you, I have, I have. You really need to quantify that first. So, so firstly, it, it, it's entirely subjective, right? Uh, like, or rather, mm. let me let me go back and recant that statement. <laughs> I prefer Nuxt to Next. Um, I've had better performance using Nuxt. I think how Nuxt handles state is really, really cool. Um, ben, we spoke about it a little bit on ZA Tech. With um, you can essentially like um, populate your state store server side, and then and then deliver that through to the client. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do in that regard if you yeah, but you if you're working that. with a complex. I, I don't know. I think the current state of Next is not great. I think they're experimenting That's... RSC, um, and like they definitely haven't found a happy path yet and so that's exactly because, it. because they are owned by a company that is trying to drive like kpis and okrs and things they are pushing for a release so that they can they can yeah. hit their metrics um and that is hurting the the framework um yeah, yeah so like outlets and the app router next has been doing that for ages like I, I was doing that in Nuxt like three, four years ago. And I mean, Nuxt is just like, it's it's a Nuxt child. So you can embed routes and other routes by using a, a child, which is an outlet or a slot. And it was really ergonomic. I felt really productive in it. Um, mm. Again, a little bit more black magic than I'd like for my my tastes because when I ran into edge cases, I like there's there was Plus. not much that I could really do to, yeah, yes. React, you can... Skulk, is Ben roboting out on your side as well? A bit, but you know, okay. that's that's the risk you run while inviting Ben to these type of things. He is a bit of a robot. <laughs> <laughs> He's okay. plugged uh, in directly to Google. All right, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put on I'm gonna put on my my lecturer hat now and say time to move on, guys. We have to talk about other things. And what I want to talk about is really like all the really nice, nuanced, and fair and reasonable takes we had on X, what was Twitter, now X, and, and Medium about TypeScript. And, you know, uh, Turbo's uh, like kind of, was it a video? I think it was a video. Like uh, they released about moving and also Svelte going away from TypeScript. And obviously now a lot of people saw that's kind of the, the beginning of the end, and you know we had a lot of reasonable, super nice yeah, discussions like on that. When DHH says something, right? When DHH says something, then then we just have to listen. Yeah, because 100%. Like, clearly, clearly, a hey dot com just revolutionized email. Like there we're all using. Oh, obviously. Like, I, yeah. don't, I don't have. I, I, I everyone moved their companies over to hey dot com. <laughs> Because like <laughs> the NHS is always right. Especially yeah. like countries that aren't close to data centers where it's hosted. Um like they're they're having the best experience. Yeah. Okay, so sorry know. for those if, uninformed. If it, what's the deal with hate and come? Like, like, yeah. uh, <laughs> give me two hey, I wanted to I wanted to I first wanted to make my joke about not <laughs> yeah, it was an absolute <laughs> it was an absolute dumpster fire like i don't know oh i saw these things popping up in my linkedin feed i saw them popping up in slack on said i take everywhere people posting links to random medium.com articles that is like i like about like this is the end for typescript and no one's using typescript anymore and uh, i don't know i feel qualified as someone that doesn't like typescript to say that if you think typescript is on the decline you are out of touch you are so out of touch um and i'm saying this as someone who doesn't even like typescript like typescript is eating javascript at the moment um but yeah 
Sorry, like, uh, Ben, you, yeah, you need to tell us. Right? Like, yeah. if, you, if you look at a lot of the large profile, aside from the turbo stimulus thing, um, moving away from TypeScript articles, the Deno one, like most of them still use the JS doc that leveraged the TSC <laughs> type checking compiler, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. it's just they're not using the syntax. DC39 is currently exploring adding essentially the TypeScript syntax to standard JavaScript so that we can have different kinds of compilers. So if, if you're talking about TypeScript is dying, like, yeah, totally cool. It's, it, it's going to, 10 years from now, TypeScript isn't going to be a thing anymore. JavaScript is going to have the the syntax that to allow for type checking in the language is just going to be there. And then mm. there might be a TypeScript compiler 10 years from now that yeah. that like works on, on your JavaScript. Probably won't be. Maybe I'll use the temporal API. Oh, temporal. <laughs> no, now you're talking. But I have, I, have but, some, like, I have some hot takes and mixed feelings about that, though. But the point is, Types in your JavaScript are not going away. They are going. There is going to be more types in more JavaScript, oh, yeah. of, and it is going to be a more formal, more standardized thing. And here's my hot take for the week: I think it's irresponsible to write production uh, code that isn't backed by by some kind of static analysis. I, because... I have I have the perfect slide for Ben. Yeah, you come, Ben. <laughs> no, my slides broke. <laughs> ah, there's been. <laughs> I, I don't want to work. I don't want to work on non-statically analyzable JavaScript code bases because I can't change anything. I can't go. Oh, there's this like base component or whatever that's used by everything, and I need to make a change with, to it. And I can't. I can't change that with confidence. I can't be sure. I can't quote every reference. When I, yeah. as simple as renaming the component or a prop of the component, right, or or a yeah. function. So let's not even. Talk I was going to say, it. isn't the problem that you can change anything? Sounds at least going to say like, "Yo, don't change this." Yeah, well, exactly. TypeScript. If I want to rename a function that is used in God knows how many places, I just press F two, rename the function, and, I, and like my job's done. I don't have to sit around and grip and deploy the thing and hopefully have a test suite that catches if I missed anything. I just press F2, type the new name, press enter, and I'm done. Like It's like my ticket's done, my work's done for the day. Stock sharing is Slack with us. Um, yes, your private messages. something you can do in JS? Because I'm so used to doing that, I didn't even realize you can't do it in JS. You can, but you can't. It, it's not going to be correct. Because you can't statically analyze JavaScript. <laughs> you can't. <Yeah. laughs> you, you can try. You can get an approximation of static analysis. But if you don't mm -hmm. have types, like you cannot properly do static analysis. And like I'm, I'm not going to yeah. without that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm going there... to summarize my my thoughts on this. Uh, I did share it on ZA Tech, which is why I opened on Slack. Not not because I'm just like randomly slacking uh, while you guys are talking. Uh, also, just shout responding out to, to work messages, guys. <laughs> yeah, shout out to uh, shout out to uh, Rob. Uh, I still need to even look at your messages. There you go. Um, but uh, so I think like my personal take is static typing is super useful. In fact, uh, so helpful that despite how badly TypeScript does static typing, so I'll unpack that a bit. Um, it's still a net win versus untyped JavaScript, although TypeScript has gotten better. Static typing has diminishing returns if you're a single dev. Um, I guess Ben would argue with that, but um, for me, the primary benefits of static typing is like collaboration, working together as a team, and so forth, like separation of labor, like keeping things decoupled. Um, yeah, and so, and I think there is a cost technically, um, but I do think that cost is carried by the seniors, like setting it up, maintaining the system, and so forth. And it just comes in and starts writing TypeScript. Um, yeah, and I kind of believe the argument about static typing in JavaScript is settled. Um, I think anyone who 
um, like says that you know we don't need static typing in JavaScript. I kind of bunch them in with the same type of people that would say, you know, why do you have all these fancy schmancy frameworks? Um, just write plain yeah. JavaScript, man. Yeah, oh, geez, uh, very... probably trying yeah. to sell you. <laughs> ah, they course. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> you, but, yeah. you heard of 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 our our Lord and Savior vanilla JavaScript. Um, <laughs> like... yeah. So, but so my so so to continue on that, um, I wouldn't say I would go as far as saying starting just plain JavaScript project that you know is going to scale is irresponsible. But what I will say is I'm I'm very much in the teaching world and. I've actually considered going back and changing some of the curriculums that I created to start with TypeScript. Like not do JavaScript and then transition to TypeScript, just start out full on in TypeScript. Because I actually think whether you end up writing plain JavaScript or not, I think learning TypeScript is going to make you a better JavaScript developer. Because you need yeah, to I know what's happening all the time. You need to be able to say, this is what this thing is going to do. And this is what this thing is. Um, yeah. Here's hard take number two for this week for me. Dynamic I don't have another slide for you, Ben. <laughs> are not easier to learn than than type programming languages. Like the, the I don't think unless you can come to me with some kind of quantitative me measure as to why a dynamic programming language is easier to learn. Sure, we can have the theoretical argument that that adding this extra concept of types makes things harder. I learned to program in Pascal. A lot of people learn to program in Pascal. Pascal has one of the most arduous type systems um, I've, I've ever encountered. It made me understand what was going on better than, like, if I had to, whenever I have to teach someone how to program for the first time, I always go like, Man, I should probably start with less because they're going to end up there anyway. And then I go, I have no idea how to teach them this. Uh, <laughs> it's like, just like this expression, this expression is beautiful. Everything is an exception. Or, or just go like, yeah, so memory is represented like this as a 32 bit integer, and you can tell a variable it's a 32. Like, there's a lot more concrete stuff to go on. I probably have to say this that languages with type information are probably easier to learn than dynamic languages. Ben, you so, have I mean, become I... the drama. You have become one with the drama now. Like, there's no distinction between Ben and the drama that he's causing. He has become one. Go ahead, um, uh, Mike. I, I don't necessarily share all your takes there, but I think the, the big thing for me is feedback loop. Right? If you're working in JavaScript and something doesn't work, like, or you don't know if something works or, or doesn't work until you run it, TypeScript, you immediately get told, like, hey, you're trying to break the rules. Please do something mm. else. Mm. Like, JavaScript's going to tell you the same thing, except it's going to tell you that at runtime. Mm. Yeah. So having to, you know, run the job, like, check your browser or have you working, as opposed to just, like, getting that instant feedback in your RDE. And then again, the thing for me is, like I, like I mentioned earlier, the IntelliSense, the typo, um, resilience. I am... I am I mean, I should be wearing glasses, but my, my typing is not good enough. It's fast, but it's it's fast and loose. So the auto yeah. completion, like that's just absolute magic for me. And also working yeah. with libraries, you get like such nice insight. So mm. yeah, uh, for me, this is this is not even a, a discussion. That like it's it's surprising for me to see people like um, thinking that that JavaScript is is the way. And particularly when we've got things now mm. like TSX. It's so mm. easy to run TypeScript files. Like, there's no excuse saying, "Oh, you can't just, you know, run, run a mm. the TypeScript file." So, mm. yeah. So my, in in closing, from my side, I so I would say that I think where I diverge a bit is, and like, I don't like TypeScript. I don't like the idea of actually putting types in the JavaScript. Uh, like spec, uh, I think first and foremost, we are so like the world of typing in JavaScript is so young still at this point. There's still still so much to figure out that by now, standardizing that in the specification is going to be kind of, 
I don't know, like uh, ES4 all over again. Um, but one thing that I do feel is I, I, I can't imagine how I would write JavaScript like nowadays without static typing. But I think where I would disagree is I think bolting it on top of JavaScript is a bad idea. Um, I personally, I'm a much bigger fan of a language that compiles down to JavaScript, like Elm or, or Reason or something um, that is built with static typing in mind and adheres somewhat closely to JavaScript, except the parts where it makes static typing really hard um, and inferring things and so forth. So I think I, I agree with everything. I just, I'm not, a, I don't agree. I'm not a big fan of bolting types on top of JavaScript. After I think, the fact. I think like what TypeScript has come out out as like syntactically, especially once we get pattern matching, um, mm. is is actually a really ergonomic and and yeah. and and nice language. Like I yeah. I enjoy Lisp. I enjoy MLs. Yeah. I especially enjoy ML derivative languages. I've yes. I've written production systems in Smalltalk, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, the like. I like the syntax and ergonomics of TypeScript. It's it it's yeah. not like it's very and the reason for this I will continue to argue is because every decision syntactically that has been made for TypeScript has been made with ergonomics in mind. Um, sure. And I, I think also the other thing is like you can't discount there's a lot of benefits downstream from popularity. And I, I think TypeScript really benefits for the, um, like in terms of the amount of eyes that are on it and the amount of people that are thinking about it. It's almost the same with JavaScript, you know? Like, uh, like JavaScript became a really good language because you had all these browsers actually competing, trying to optimize it as much as possible, which you, you've never had that type of thing for like Go or whatever. So you start with the very low baseline, but just because you have so much movement and eyes and people on it and like eventually you really refine that whereas i think a lot of other language haven't been able to really been refined up to that point so i think typescript has that going for it but i i i, I do think at some point you're gonna kind of javascript's gonna be gonna get more in the way the, the, like that at some point you're like that's gonna hold typescript back um trying to be a superset of javascript but yeah I don't know. I, I've been wrong about a lot of things. I've been wrong about TypeScript. I thought TypeScript um, was going to be like a really, like I never take, take, I, I never thought TypeScript was going to take off. I was kind of using Flow back in the day. So yeah, who knows? Um, but we do have, have a comment on this, um, Skulk. Oh, yes. All right. So, oh, geez. Man. All right. We're trying to put out the drama here, but let's go. Uh, so there is a comment about um, TypeScript is a tech bubble. All right. Okay. There we go. Um, I don't know. Like, sure. Like, I, I can see that. But it's also, there's, like, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Remember, like, I would say HTML5 and CSS3 was a tech bubble. Well, bubble in terms of hype and so forth as well. There's also benefits to stuff being hype. But I, I do think... One of the drawbacks of that is that people, the same with React's popularity now as well. I also don't like the fact that React is so popular. As someone who's been using React since like the create class method back in the day, is that you have people using it because it's popular who don't understand the like the the, the design behind it and the 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 was agile like the kind of the way to use it because i think previously if it's something that's not popular you probably need to familiarize yourself with what it's trying to do and its take and its design and so forth and then be convinced by that and be like hey i think this is this is, i like where this is going i'm 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 going to i'm going to jump on this train and so by things becoming popular you have people jumping on it that kind of don't share that um but yeah I guess that's that's the cycle. That's the tech cycle. You know, something gets popular and then no one wants to use it anymore. Okay, but from one hot take to another hot take, I want to chat about a medium article, and so I also want to kind of give the disclaimer that I so I used to write a bit on medium, but medium I don't know, like I, the stuff on medium has just gotten so bad the last three years. 
Um, turns out having like a long form format where everyone can share their thoughts um, is not necessarily a great idea. Maybe we should go back to a place where at the very least you need to understand a bit of HTML and CSS to get a blog going. Uh, but <laughs> there's a lot of really bad takes on Medium. I almost immediately discount anything I see on Medium, except this one. This one was surprisingly... And it's a surprisingly good take. And it, I might consider it a good take purely just because I agree with it. I'm, I'm curious what the rest of you guys think. Um, and I actually, talking about hot takes, I actually heard about it the first time by Mr. Primetime himself. Um, so I think he did a reaction video on it. I think the article itself is about like two months old. And like, don't get discouraged by the title and stuff. Like, it's not like very gatekeepery. I actually find it very encouraging terms of listen like you like like this is how you can grow this is how you can become a better developer it's not like oh you're not a real developer um but effectively oh, geez, let me just find a screen that doesn't have animations going nuts um effectively the article just talks about people not pe like i think people like mm, how would I summarize it? Effectively, trying to do this now on like pain maids. Um, effectively, people children. not. Sorry, go ahead. People, children, kill and dying. <laughs> the black <Black> Eyed Peas. <laughs> All right. Oh, jeez. Uh, okay. Oh, you're not helping, Ben. Uh, I'm not trying to. People. people <laughs> People, There's children, a mute button. Children, children are saying that all the children are saying. Um, so effectively, it, it talks about over, overly relying on abstractions. Um, so you know, like starting with React and like just learning React, never delving underneath the surface. And I really resonate with that. I, I see this with a lot of my students as well and juniors that come into the tech industry is you effectively become a framework operator. You know, like you can almost think about like a forklift or whatever, you know, like it's a, it's a, it's a tool and it has buttons and levers and things that you pull and you just know what buttons to push. And so you're effectively becoming competent with an abstraction and not necessarily understanding what that abstraction does underneath the hood. So I think there's a lot of gatekeeping around this, which is why I really appreciate this article. Um, because it's, it's, it's a very, what would be the word? It, it's written in a very encouraging tone. Um, but I do think there's a danger in we're seeing a lot of like juniors coming out of boot camps and stuff now that are very proficient in abstractions without understanding actually what those abstractions abstract. And, even knowing why you use that abstraction, uh, you know, like, so not, I think this is something we take for granted because a lot of us kind of grew up with jQuery and, you know, and J the jQuery abstraction was very, very tiny. So, you know, you still, you didn't really have a way to declaratively express um, your logic or whatever. So I think once these frameworks started coming around, like you kind of saw, okay, what, what problem does this solve? And this problem, and, and what it does is it solves the problem of interfacing in an imperative manner with the DOM all the time, okay? Which is a pain and is just like a, a recipe for bugs. But I think a lot of juniors coming into the industry now don't even know what the frameworks do. Um, and my general take on this is, you know, there's this law that, like code, code is always twice as hard. The code that you write is always twice as hard to debug as it is to write it. And I think it's the same here is you have a lot of people doing really advanced stuff using abstractions and so forth, but then the abstractions break down and they don't even know how to ask a question or to start looking in terms of why it don't work anymore. Um, this is obviously very tied into... Um, Law of Leaky Abstractions by uh, by Joel Spolsky. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts, Mike and Ben, on this. I have very strong feelings um, just because I work with so many juniors. 
Yeah, I mean, like, really, if you if you aren't if you aren't writing everything in assembler, then then like, what are you doing? Like, you don't physically you know, mine the minerals if you, out of you, the earth. If you don't, if yeah. you don't know that, like, a use use effect is gonna issue a move command. Yeah. On, 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 if you don't, if you don't that. full on go <laughs> go zama zama and get the iron and the copper yourself and build your own processor, you know, and get make some your salts. own logic gates. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, make your honestly, own logic gate. You are not no, a programmer. No, it still works. Then, like, then what are you even doing? No, I don't know. It depends. It depends on a lot of stuff. And I think there's. It depends on what you end up calling yourself and what you want to be accountable for. Like, you can. You can. Be a framework operator or whatever, and and be employed and deliver value and like build cool stuff. But you can only responsibly take on a certain level of accountability there, right? Like you shouldn't you shouldn't be building something. That people are going to use that is critical to to them in some way, shape, or form, if you can't actually operationally support it. But if if you are if you are part of a team that has the operational capacity to support that project, sure, just be a framework person. Um, I don't have a problem with that. But if if you're going to be selling a product to people. Like you need to be able to operate that thing <laughs> completely, and you need to understand what's going on with it, or you need to be able to hire someone who can when when things go wrong. Um, Inevitably, there needs to yeah, there needs to be someone who can figure out why things aren't working, and like there's gonna be less of those people because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to. To know how all of the stuff fits together, and it takes years and years of 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 blood, sweat, and tears to to get to the point where you're like, oh well, like this state update is is broken because like you're running v this version of Chrome, and there's this weird thing with XPath in this version of Chrome, and I just intuitively know that. Like it takes years to get there, and everyone doesn't have to have that. Um, I think it's fine to start at a point. Like, do what you can do to deliver value and 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 get <laughs> get the money you want essentially, or or get the happiness you want from 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 building products or building toys or whatever, and go as deep as you want to go. Um, but don't don't deliver products if you don't have a way to operate them. <laughs> so I think for me, the, the main the main problem is that that's not a deliberate decision anyone ever makes. I find um, so the like, and I think at the very least, what I'm advocating for is that that's a deliberate decision you make. Um, you know, like, because I think a lot of people hear about all the benefits of, you know, the tech industry and, you know, there's so many jobs and whatever. Um, and then what happens is like they, they start out as a junior and they don't see that. They see like a, like a, a industry that's extremely bottom heavy, that's very saturated at the bottom. Um, and to me, the question is always, how do you get out of that junior pool as fast as possible? And and to me, like, and I think this is where, where, where the implications of this article and a lot of this, these things actually become concrete, is do you just learn more frameworks or do you actually go deeper and try and understand the fundamentals? Or do you just learn frameworks as a checkbox Okay, I can do Angular, I can do React, I can do Vue, um, as opposed to actually diving deeper and understanding the commonalities between these things and, and so forth. It's almost like that thing of, you know, the 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 woodcutter who has to cut through the night. Um, 
because his axe is his axe is dull. Um, and then when asked, like, you know, why doesn't he just sharpen his axe? Like the response is effectively, like, can't you see what I'm already doing? When the hell am I going to have time to even sharpen the axe? You know, like I'm already working through the night just to chop the trees. And I, I think it's kind of similar to that. It's so, and I think my question, and maybe I pose this to you, Ben and, and Mike, is, is this something you need to be deliberate about? Do you think that if you're just, I'm going to be a React developer, I'm actually going to make my title on LinkedIn React developer. Um, is this something that just happens as a side effect of working with an abstraction? You gradually start understanding the the, the 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 underlying fundamentals or is it something you need to be deliberate about in terms of I'm, I'm actually going to dive deeper I'm not going to ever do that unless you actually deliberately say I'm going to try and understand the fundamentals you absolutely need to be deliberate about it like you need to and either you have that kind of personality and drive or you don't <laughs> like I'm I'm sorry, but you cannot teach someone to be a hacker. Like you are you are either born that way, um, and by born that way I, I mean like you are You mean Lady Gaga <laughs> You are also raised in a in an environment that that makes you the kind of inquisitive person that wants to like hack things and pull things apart. But there's also just something inherently <laughs> in the kind of people who who get these things you have to be curious you have to want to know how these things work and i cannot for the life of me no matter how hard i try teach someone to have that curiosity like uh, either you have that curiosity or you don't and it's there's no problem like you can be in this industry if you don't have that curiosity someone else can teach you how to be to this point, a frameworker, and you can be a productive person that delivers real value and 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 can can do cool things. But like, <laughs> unless you have the curiosity to want to understand how this thing, these things work in a in a deeper way, like unless you actually want to take things apart and understand how they work. Like you, you're doing yourself a disservice to to force yourself into that bucket, I think, because you're always going to be beholden to other people having to teach you how these things work. And you can enrich yourself through that way as much as you want. Like you can, you can please please uh, some more from to to get knowledge from other people. But, uh, but unless you can teach yourself to flip and fish, um. You're not going to get there, and everyone isn't built that way because human beings are diverse, and we have different strengths. Mm. Mike, so and I, sorry, I also want to say I'm curious what your take is, Mike, because I think you've made the transition to tech a lot more recently than than Ben and I have. So I think I think Ben and I came into the world of tech where there was kind of you couldn't really do much unless you learned the fundamentals. Yeah, for um, sure. You couldn't and do much unless you knew what, an, what a CSS class is. Like there's physically like no way. There was no tailwind. There was nothing. If you don't know what a CSS class is, good luck building a website. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is probably going to seem highly unrelated, but I had this amazing math teacher in school. He was this old Afrikaans Urmi and... Um, I remember him teaching us calculus and like he'd always teach us from first principles and understand the underlying abstraction before we got into into the shortcuts that you can can take when you when you're doing maths. And I just remember like uh, he also gave us computer science. Um, and I remember asking him something the one day and his answer to me like I'll never forget this because it, it often comes to mind and he just said gebruik jou ika. And <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Yo, dude, <laughs> what if I don't have my one? life?" <laughs> um, and it, like, it's a really interesting thing because we, he would always teach us the underlying and then teach us the abstraction. And I think there's a lot of value in that. And kind of to to use what Ben was saying as a leaping off point, learning the abstraction gets results. It's really easy 
to take the shortcuts and to be able to deliver value, but then to go back and understand the underlying, that's that like once you already know how to do this stuff, to go back and, and do that is challenging. Like it takes it takes that grit and determination, that curiosity. Um, and as someone that has also been involved in educating in the tech space, I think it's it's so important to try to to plant those seeds early on so that a person has a frame of reference so they're not just like lost in the dark, um, but also so that as as the person's learning, they can reference these 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 foundational <laughs> ideas. Um so yeah, it, it is a difficult one. And I, I, I'm kind of in the same boat as Ben. It's like each person is going to learn as much of the underlying implementation as, they're, as they want to um, at the end of the day. It is something that can be promoted though. It is something that, that can be, instead of gatekeeping it, we can make it easier for people. We can, we can decrease the, or make the learning curve a little bit smoother for people that are curious. You know, there's nothing more frustrating than you know, I want to learn about something, but oh, like, I need this amount of base knowledge to even start tackling the problem. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm a huge advocate of understanding, you know, how the sausage is made. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's, it's really like, if you're getting into this industry, it, it's a balance of how much time can you spend understanding the, the implementation of the abstract or like how the abstraction is made, as opposed to how can I deliver value? Mm -hmm. 100%. That's a really great take. And I, I, I think like the, 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 the hard part is not having, because I despise gatekeeping as well, you know, like, and um, how do you do that without it being gatekeeping? And I think that the point is to not lose sight of the forest for the trees and, and not make it about the virtue of the fundamentals themselves, but in terms of what are the implications? And I think maybe let me ask this because like i i have my thoughts on this do you think you'll be able to grow into a senior position if you don't pursue learning the fundamentals from day one that's a dangerous question um the that's first thing answer would be do you want to become a manager <laughs> <laughs> the first <laughs> comment I'd like to, to, to put out there is senior yeah. varies from place to place. Yes. I know a lot of people, a lot of places where you can be a framework and a senior. Hmm. True. That's true. Let me ask it this way. Like, are you going to career wise, like, are, are you going to get better returns by actually learning the fundamentals um, or learning more abstractions? And I think like oh, we're yeah. speculating here. You you can't if it's hmm? more value from the fundamentals. You're fundamentally gonna get more value from the fundamentals. Ah, oh, there you go. You're, there you go. Fundamentally. <laughs> yeah, there's my DevConf talk. You're gonna have fun huh? going mental as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think okay. Fundamentals yeah. are an investment. Like mm. for the, like you're not gonna get as quick a return on it. Mm. Um, but if you understand the fundamentals, the, yeah. picking up a framework is 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 easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, yeah. Um, I I I worked largely in in React for the first portion of my career, um, React and TypeScript early on, and then I jumped over to Vue, and picking up Vue was was so much easier because in React I I was posed with enough challenges with the project that I was on, that I needed mm. to go and learn the fundamentals to understand. So it's mm. the the debugging case that you you spoke about earlier. I, mm. I was I was the only front end dev for a really large project, and um, loads of 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 debugging and, and understand understanding the the abstractions. And when I went over to Vue, all I could do is just recognize these patterns. Um, and I, you know because I'd I mean also from day one I've had an interest in the um, in the underlying, you know that that's always something that's been important to me. I uh, I probably I probably spent. I don't know, at least six months just doing JS stuff before I even touched a framework. Um, and yeah, picking up Vue was 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 really easy. I mean, granted, Vue is pretty easy as well, but then picking up the next one became easier and easier. Um, and because I had the these fundamentals, my my acceleration with 
with the, the, the things that I abstracted with the frameworks was, mm. was really, really high because my, my fundamentals were, were comparatively strong at the time. Mm. So I, I also want to preface that when I say fundamental, I don't necessarily mean like the technical low level things like, you know, I'm not talking about like bitwise operators or, you know, uh, array buffers or those type of things. Um, what I actually also, well, that and but like also mean like general computer science principles, you know, like encapsulation. Um, even just this concept of, uh, of abstraction, I actually find that to be the biggest, like defining characteristic of someone who's high on the intermediate scale or senior is they have a really, really good grasp on what an abstraction is, what's a good abstraction, what are the drawbacks of certain ways of abstracting things. You know, like it's almost like you hit a certain point and then like all your learning is just about getting better at abstracting things and managing complexity. Um, so I also think like, I also mean like, you know, like a lot of theory, computer science theory, but yeah, let's move on. So next thing, let's talk about the fall of Rome. Huh? Ben. How many times sad, do you think of Rome, Ben? Sad, <laughs> sad, sad Ben noises. <laughs> so I want to say similar to the classic fall of Rome, um, it actually started way back already. I think we 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 had one JS breakpoint where I mentioned that it's actually no there's no longer a company behind it. Um, it was initially they did the classic you know thing where you have an open source thing and then you try and build a company behind it to monetize it, um, and the company disbanded. Um, and yeah, so um, but yeah, like I think now it's like officially dead. <laughs> Yeah, sad. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like I, I was hopeful. I was hopeful for Rome. Like it mm. did had some cool goals. It looked like it was. It had mm. some momentum, and then it just like burned down. And now we have this biome thing, and like I don't know. I just don't have much confidence anymore. Um, yeah, I really I liked Rome as well. Like I I I didn't like Rome. Like I I wasn't using it. Like I don't I don't think it was mature enough. Um, but jeez, oh, Inga Um, but also I um, I liked where it was going. Hello. Huh? Hello. Does this, this T-shirt not scream northern suburbs? Huh? <laughs> there we go. Huh? Say hello for Hello. Oh, she's looking you guys are on the screen over here. Hello. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> she just got home. Um so Lenny um, Kokraha. so okay, so another thing is when while we talk about Rome, when we have this big word biome on the screen, um Ben, you wanna tell us why? Because that's what it's called now. <laughs> well, they forked yeah. it. That's the fork. Well, the <laughs> yeah. Just space. Yeah. If you if you are like if you were interested in what Rome was doing, this this is where you have to look now. Um, mm. I I'm going to continue like once a month, seeing if there's release notes or whatever, and seeing if it's done anything. But like, I'm not excited anymore. Like visibly not excited <laughs> yeah and also like one of the other reasons why we have this big word biome on the screen is because like it's such a rad logo it it looks like it was created in ms paint and i love that aesthetic it's like if i had to create a company in high school okay maybe i'm being a bit maybe i'm being a bit like of a douchebag here but like i studied visual arts for seven years. Katie Come skulk on, is my favorite skulk Oh, let me tell you. Um, so, but like also what I really appreciate is people say it's like if you combine Remix and McDonald's, then you get Rome. I'll buy them. <laughs> and I like how it's just like, like a McDonald'sified version of the, of the Remix logo. All right. So while we're on the topic of JavaScript ecosystems, let's talk about this, this bread boy. Huh? Let's talk about <laughs> bun. Um, well, like, has anyone played around with it yet? I, I have to say that I haven't yet. Um, but I've gotten asked by a ton of people, like, what is it actually? So I've explained to a lot of people what it is, but I have yet to actually play around with it. 
Yeah. It is many things. That is the problem. <laughs> like yes. Bun is Bun is not just a JavaScript runtime. Bun is also not just a transpiler. It is also not just a bundler. It is also not just a package manager. It is also or not a web just server. a server <laughs> or a web yeah. server. It is many so it things. It saw what TypeScript did, and it was like, hold my beer. Yeah, so, like, my official stance on Bun right now is, like, use it as a package manager um, and a bundler, um, and the other use cases are not mature yet. Mm. Like the tests? Um, don't trust the tests. More mature. <laughs> well, you have to like to use Bun's test. You have to use the Bun runtime, right? Okay. And the run yeah. Good. Mm. So I'm curious, and you know, once again, I'm I'm pretty ignorant about the uh, the actual internals of Bun. I, I kind of know in principle what it is and what it's set out to be, and so forth. Um, but like, so for example, like it's testing and stuff is is that built on top of existing things like test or v test or something or is it just like they just built their own thing from the ground up so are they kind brand of like, also, go ahead brand new but compatible so okay. so bun testing is compatible with just and v test okay um but it's it's on the bun runtime okay the bun and it's it's not it's not um, it's not just a curation of tooling. It's actually like its own complete thing from the ground up. Yeah, just most like... likely written in Zig. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Um, okay. I can get the feel right. like uh, I I can see why like what they're trying to achieve, but it, like I feel as though they're trying to solve. I'm not sure if. I agree with what they're trying to solve as being a problem. Mm. I love that I can pick Jest or Vtest. I love mm. that I can I can pick whatever web server I want. Mm. Like, I don't know that. I think that, like, that's part of the JS meme. You know, yeah. There's there's a million different competition. Like, there, there's so much competition for each thing. There's competition mm. for our run times now, um, and it's mm. great. It pushes everything forwards. But mm. can can the bun team compete with with all of these things? Yeah, I'm not like from my perspective, yeah. Dino deploy, like that's the big selling point behind Dino. Um, yeah. Bun is eventually going to be a hosting platform. I mean, you can run Bun on AWS, but it's pretty slow. Yeah, or, or rather, it's slower than Node. Um, yeah, so it's really just a question of like. I, I would I would have way preferred personally for them to hone in um, on you know yes. getting that npm compatibility in place or yes. getting the runtime to be to be really reliable. You know we, mm. we shouldn't ever hear of seg faults. Um, mm. Mm. No, agreed. As, ben, I, or as as Ben mentioned, <laughs> the the bundler bun. is really cool. Uh, bun Yannick. <laughs> 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 so yeah, so generally, go ahead. A little bit too much on on, on TypeScript uh, this round. We we're, we're gonna have to start uh, on on that bombshell on that bun shell. <laughs> start closing up. <laughs> we don't even get to Astra, guys. I think we need to ban TypeScript from our next one because we can't help ourselves. <laughs> Are we popping? Are we actively popping the TypeScript bubble now? <laughs> like, pop. Like, maybe we need to change it to TypeScript breakpoint. I actually, oh, yeah. no, please, no, please, no, please, no, please, no. Get that sweet, sweet Microsoft sponsorship. Um, so I actually forgot to put the Astro stuff in. So Astro will have to wait. Astro three. Um, I actually, the last slide I have in here is v v zero. Um, which you know, if this is a if this is a junior developer, all I have to say is, the machines are coming, buddy. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's most that's mostly a joke. Um, mostly a joke in terms of how overhyped AI is. But um, I think there's something worth to discuss there. Do you guys think there's any real danger in? Because this isn't the this isn't the first time that we've tried to throw. AI at user interfaces. Um, 
but this is the first time where we have GPT, the history of GPT. Um, I'm curious what your thoughts are. I'm, I'm so not sorry. Sure. I, hmm? I I've got to run to for medical stuff. Okay, there you go. Get a better excuse next time, Mike. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I, guys. I, I, yeah, I also need to head out. Um, but I think, like, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's maybe like a, a good place to stop. Uh, ben, is there anything quick you want to mention about that? Yeah, Luddite's got a Luddite, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I... I think maybe I'm too my my views are too colored by previous implementations. I think there was this thing called Grid, which was supposed to do UI design with AI, and like that was just such a dumpster fire. I don't know. It's interesting. Uh, we'll see. But I think it's also a lot of a lot of UI design at the moment is is actually I, I don't know. I wish I could do a talk at some point about UI design being a solved problem. But anyway, um, like. That's enough spice and not enough hotness at the moment. Let's not get into that. All right, guys. Um, it was great chatting to all of you. And uh, you go do your thing, Mike. And um, let's chat again then in a month. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks Bye, so much, everyone. guys. Have a great day and a great weekend, everyone. Bye. Bye.